With Black Swan coming to the character warp in version 2.0, coupled with the recently released runway, an absolute powerhouse of a support for DOT team comps, DOT can very likely compete or even outperform our current hypercarry setups. Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. Today, we will be going through exactly what players need to prepare in order to maximize their DOT team comp potential. And without further ado, let's get into today's content. So very briefly, damage over time, more commonly known as dots, they are debuffs on enemy targets which causes an instance of damage at the start of the enemy's turn for a set amount of turns. Uh, currently, there are DOT effects for four of the seven elements in Hongai Star Rail, namely Fire for Burn, Lightning for Shock, Winsher for Wind, and Bleed for Physical. Um, dots are applied either by a character's ability or when a target has their weakness broken. Note that the weakness broken DOT as well as the character's DOT applied by the abilities and they're two completely separate DOT multipliers but all of these DOT sources, they are affected by your attack percentage, damage percentage, and the rest of the debuffs such as res penetration, defense down, and vulnerability debuff. Note that DOTs, they are not affected by your crit rate slash crit damage for now, unless Behoyo somehow makes DOT crit in the future, right? So that is the basic, and here is the juicy part of today's content, which is the changes that Black Swan will introduce to the DOT meta. As we all know by now, and I've said this in like almost every single one of my previous videos, defense shred is an extremely valuable DOT debuff for every single DPS's damage output, especially with DOT since it doesn't benefit from crit stats. So the key thing as to why defense is so important is because at the end of the day, it is the only multiplier that acts as an exponential multiplier, which means the more defense rate you have, the more damage you're going to be able to do, right? The more damage you're going to get amplified up to a certain point of 100% defense rate. Uh, with Black Swan's skill being able to apply a constant defense down on the enemy, she is basically like a Pella that brings both defense penetration as well as damage over time. And as such, this is going to be an excellent, excellent pairing with our current DOT 4P set, which is the Prisoner of the Deep, which provides a 18% defense ignore, assuming that you have three DOTs on the target. So when we pair this up with another defense threat source like Pella, Silver Wolf, or even E1 Rame, the amount of damage our DOT team comp can do will be extremely, extremely high. For all of our DOT units, Pretty much every single DOT can make use of the Prisoner 4 piece effect. Your Kafka, Gwen Iphone, Luca, Sampo, and now our brand new Black Swan. So, with how synergistic Black Swan's kit is, there will be no doubt that Black Swan will be our premier 5 star DOT support as well as DPS hybrid to pair up with Kafka, far surpassing our previous DOT uh, secondary DPSs such as Luca, Gwen Iphone, and Sampo. So, with that established, here is the changes to all of our current DOT units that players might face in the future. Uh, in version 2.0 but before we begin there's one very important information that players need to know which is DOT units do not need Kafka to perform that's right uh, CN has shown that even for players without Kafka Sampo, Luka, and Gwen Iphone, they can comfortably fit into a multitude of team comps and achieve satisfactory results in our current endgame content, which is to say getting 3 stars on Memory of Chaos Floor 12. So with the release of Black Swan, it is not strictly a must for players to pull for Black Swan only if they have Kafka. So if even 4 star units can hold their ground without Kafka, uh, then Black Swan without Kafka is 100% able to perform by herself. Now let's talk a little bit about Kafka. Uh, as of now, Kafka can be ran as both a DOT enabler or hyper carry due to a limited roster of strong 5 star DOT units. So CM players may often result in using Kafka alone as a hyper carry with Ting, Win, and Ranmei to support Kafka's damage capabilities without relying on units like Sampo or Luka. Uh, with Black Swan, depending on her DOT multipliers, Kafka may very well end up taking a more backseated role, supporting Black Swan who may be the new main DPS for DOT units. Uh, this trend might also continue into the future 5 star DOT units from Fire, Light, Lightning and physical. So in order to prepare for this and ensure that Kafka maintains a position in a DOT team comp, players should start building Kafka with more speed or possibly even energy regeneration uh, as we pivot Kafka into more of a sub DPS slash enabler role. Uh, remember, Kafka's key strength in a DOT comp isn't exactly her DOT multipliers. It is her ability to trigger all DOTs uh, regardless of how strong her own DOT is. Uh, so this is going to be even more prevalent from her Iden 1, Iden 2 as well as a signature Light Cone 1 where Mihoyo specifically designed Kafka to be a utility DOT support and pave way for future DOT units. Next, moving on to Sampo, 
players may think that Sambo is in the highest danger in terms of getting power crept facing direct competition from Black Swan as a Wind Nihility DOT applier. Uh, but that being said, there is a potential for DOT players to still run Sampo, but instead of getting replaced by Black Swan, we will use Sampo to replace Kafka against Wind Weak enemies as a support breaker with his high toughness bar damage via bounce and 30% DOT damage vulnerability. A Sampo, Black Swan and Rame team with sustain can actually see decent levels of success, especially if our Sampo is Idolum 4, which detonates a percentage of wind shear inflicted on the enemy when used against Wind Weak enemies. And at this point, Sampo can more or less perform Kafka's role while also providing more toughness damage, especially if our Kafka is off element, the enemy doesn't even have lightning weakness, then maybe at this kind of situation, players may still want to opt to use Sampo. Uh, move on to Luka. Lucas is and has been one of our, if not strongest breakers in Hongai Star Rail due to physical breaks or seen max HP percentage scaling multiplier. Uh, coupling this with Lucas' impressive toughness bar damage via his enhanced basic attack, as well as Kafka's DOT trigger, which also works on weakness broken DOTs, it is not surprising to see extraordinary amounts of damage coming from a Luka DOT break comp. Uh, keep in mind, break damage also scales with defense down so Black Swan's inclusion can scale Luka's break damage even further. Uh, one of Luka's biggest weakness is that he only works really really well against single target bosses and struggles in AoE content, especially in contents like Pure Fiction. Uh, however, that being said, there has been comps in CN where players don't even run Kafka at all and use Luka alone as a hyper carry breaker, dealing over 300,000 break damage and achieving a zero cycle clear in memory of Chaos 12 um, completely by himself, right? So even for players without Kafka, getting Black Swan to support Luka can also achieve in excellent results, especially since Black Swan also has defense down. And lastly, talking about Queen Iphone, uh, although Firebreak is not as impressive for bosses, Queen Iphone is still rather competitive with Sampo uh, thanks to her high DOT multipliers. Her main advantage stems from Fire Kiss's vulnerability being unremovable and additional Fire DOT detonations with her ultimate. Now, whether this works with Black Swan's DOT effect will need further testing, but assuming that it does, players can easily slot in Queen Iphone with Black Swan and let Queen Iphone be a budget Kafka, uh, triggering the fire DOT while applying vulnerability. Uh, keep in mind, vulnerability does not have an exponential increase like defense down, and Queen Iphone's personal break efficiency is not as fast as Sampo or Luka. Lastly, the ultimate itself also does not apply any sort of DOT burns, right? They only trigger the existing burn DOTs. Uh, nonetheless, Queen Iphone can still shine in fire week stages, not just as a DOT unit, but also as a support for mono fire team comps such as ones with Himiko or Topaz or even Asta. So that is that for all of our existing DOT units, but some of our other supports for DOT which may see an even higher usage uh, after the inclusion of Black Swan is gonna be Huo Huo, Silver Wolf and Run Mei. Uh, for Huo Huo, I believe that we should all know by now uh, she is an extremely extremely powerful sustain unit. In fact, uh, she is one of the most popular sustain unit in CN when it comes to the highest damage possible when you want to run a sustain due to energy regeneration as well as attack percentage buff. For Huo Huo, she has basically power crap every other sustain for DOT team comps since she is the only one that can buff a team-wide attack percentage and a team-wide energy regeneration, which DOT units really really require, right? Fu Xuan's crew rate trace um, really doesn't matter that much for DOTs, whereas Luo Cha's skill point positivity is also not a big issue since most DOT units don't really use skill points as much as say for example in Bibitor Lune. So with Huo Huo's buffs, this allows Kafka and the second DOT unit to potentially use extra ultimates which increases our overall team damage by a very very large amount. So given how strong Huo Huo is when it comes to dual DPS setups such as DOT team comps, uh, she's definitely going to be extremely extremely popular. Uh, now another unit that has rose in popularity with DOT team comps is actually Silver Wolf. Uh, in our current MOC meta, stages are either double elites or bosses. So these are all environments in which Silver Wolf can thrive in, right? We don't really have to face a situation where there's like three elites or four elites. Uh, so in these scenarios, Silver Wolf being a single target may not be much of a hindrance for our current DOT team comp. And with how important breaking is for a DOT team comp, right? Not just for the increased elemental damage due to the rest down, um, breaking a target creates a very, very high amount of break damage um, that nobody can really substitute if you're going to be playing it as an off element DOT. So Silver Wolf being able to implant a weakness on an enemy will greatly improve our break efficiency against the target. So for example, if we are going to be using Kafka and Black Swan, but if the enemy is only weak to lightning or the enemy is only weak to wind, adding Silver Wolf to this equation can now allow both our Kafka and Black Swan deal 
toughness bar damage and in return have a higher break efficiency and just trigger the break damage much faster compared to um, one of the units being off element. E2 Sylph also massively reduces EHR requirements for DOT and debuff landing accuracy, making it much more comfortable for players to mark their necessary debuffs on the enemy target. And lastly, and this unit pretty much needs no introduction by now, is going to be Run Mei. Uh, she's arguably the best support in the entire game and definitely the best dual DPS buffer. Um, she fits right at home in DOT team comps, which usually runs calf calf with another DOT unit. Uh, like previously stated in Sail Wolf's portion, breaking enemies' toughness bar, they are essential for all DOT team comps. And Run Mei's break efficiency, break effect, not to mention damage percentage and rest penetration, they are all excellent, excellent buffs for all of our DOT targets. And on top of all the buffs that Rame can provide, there's one really really interesting thing which is her Tenatoblum Rebloom, that is her ultimate. So if the enemies are about to recover their bar after being broken, they are then delayed and take additional damage, essentially being broken a second time. Uh, this works in a very similar manner to Freeze, which decreases an enemy's action value while advancing their next turn, which means that the enemies will take two turns in quick succession, boosting the frequency of our DOT triggers and therefore increasing our entire DOT team's damage output. So ultimately, Rame, Huo Huo and Silver Wolf, they are all really really strong for pretty much all of our DOT team comps and players can mix and match to their liking. And with our final segment of today's guide, it's gonna be changes to our DOT relics and light cones. So with the introduction of the prisoner set in version 1.5, it has essentially become the best in slot for pretty much all of our DOT units, including Black Swan when she releases. However, it should be noted that in the absence of other defense threat sources like Black Swan, Pella, or Silver Wolf, or Resolution Light Cone, uh, the Prisoner 4 piece set is actually not that much better compared to our other alternative 2 piece sets, right? Like your 4 piece Lightning, or your 2 plus 2 um, Speed plus Attack, or your 4 piece Musketeer. Um, so, if players do not have any sort of defense reduction, then you might not want to consider farming for DOT sets. But since Black Swan is going to be included into our DOT roster, and and she definitely has defense penetration and you pretty much probably will run her in almost every single DOT team comp. This further stresses 4-piece prisoner's value uh, for all of our DOT units. As for the planner ornaments, it is once again a no-brainer that our new glamour set is pretty much the best in stock for all of our DOT units. Uh, granted, you are able to reach at least 135 speed. Uh, given how Rame's speed buff can make it even easier for units to trigger the bonus or even the 160 speed bonus, uh, there is pretty much no reason for players to ever go back into farming space in station, especially when you consider most of our DOT units, they do have a lot of attack percentage in their kit since we are going to be running attack percentage boots or even attack percentage rope, right? So that's why Glamour is going to be the best in slot. Um, there is going to be some niche situations where you might run the IPC set just to make them land the debuffs on top of dealing more DOT themselves. But however, generally speaking, that domain itself is not very stamina efficient and bro, it is pretty efficient since the other alternative is Panacony and it is widely used by pretty much almost every single support if you would like, right? Just stick to farming two-piece glamour. For the main stacks, you pretty much will always run either attack or energy regeneration rope, speed boots or attack boots, attack or EHR chest, and pretty much the elemental damage sphere. This will determine your units, your team comps, and your playstyle. So do test it out yourselves, right? And then lastly, for our light cones, Guna and Sleeper is still a powerhouse of a light cone, being extremely competitive with Kafka's signature light cone. Uh, whether Black Swan's signature light cone is going to be really strong, we'll have to wait for its official release. Resolution S5 is also an excellent pick to stack on our defense down, but be careful to not hit above 100% defense down since there's no additional benefits, especially if we're going to be using Black Swan. Players really don't have any of these light cones, then Eyes of the Prey is also a decent alternative. And with that, we'll come to the end of today's content. Uh, if you guys were to engage in further discussions, feel free to check out my Discord app. Bogis Village, where we're a very active community talking about Hongai story on a daily basis. And if you guys want to check out my stream, there's going to be a twitch.tv slash MrPokey, where I stream almost every single day. Surely, we'll be updated on Discord as well. I'm really, really high for 2.0. Not only do we get Black Swan, not only do we get Sparkle, there's also going to be a ton of content. So, I will be seeing you guys when we reach the land of Panacony, right? So, that's all for today. All the best in your gacha pools, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. I, I, I genuinely cannot believe this shit. I genuinely cannot believe this shit. I genuinely... I genuinely cannot believe this shit, guys. I gen... Did I say I genuinely... I, I, did I say how I genuinely cannot believe this shit? I genuinely cannot believe this shit, guys.